Hobart, the Australian city which probably more than any other can be identified with its past. Many notable buildings, domestic and public, still survive, but the stamp of the 20th century is difficult to ignore. Those buildings it hasn't changed, it has demolished, and to reconstruct the appearance of the early days, it's necessary to look to the records of the past. In 1965, Hobart solicitor Henry Allport bequeathed his family collection to the state of Tasmania. This bequest allowed the state library to become the home of a unique visual record of early colonial life. The state library accepted Mr Allport's bequest because of the library of rare books relating to Australia and the Pacific and the collection of prints and watercolours of the colonial period that came with it. But it, this was only part of the collection, which also included 18th century furniture and china and silver and glass and almost uh, examples of every object that you could imagine. Um, these aren't things that one usually associates with libraries, but someone had to have them, and so the State Library accepted the whole bequest to get what it wanted. Mr Henry Allport was interested in many things, not so much in natural history as his family had been. He travelled more than his forebears had done and brought back furniture of the 18th century, china and glass and so on. The sort of thing that the early settler wouldn't have brought with them because someone who came to farm had to spend several years in a bark hut and this sort of furniture just wouldn't have survived. Joseph Alport and his family lived their first few months in the colony in a very crude bark hut that they directed at Broadmarsh. In 1832, he moved to Hobart. And other generations lived in different houses in various parts of Hobart. And in 1929, Mr. Henry Allport and his wife proceeded to fill this house with the various treasures that now form part of this collection. And in 1972, these were moved into specially designed premises in the State Library. We're not adding much to the furniture or the china or the silver collections, um, and this uh, really appropriate piece turns out. Uh, one item that the board has purchased from bequest funds is this 18th century bed. Mr. Allport didn't have a decent bed that fitted into the setting that was a genuine antique and we had to search more or less the markets of the world to find this example of the 1760s. Instead, we're concentrating on adding to the print collection. We hope to be the definitive collection of prints relating to Tasmania and also adding to the rare book collection. These sketches, and watercolours and prints, show what life was like in Tasmania in the 19th century. They depict the houses and the scenery and even the people. They describe life as it was in a way that the written word never can. We're not interested in acquiring the sketches and so on done after about 1880 because by then the camera had taken over. Uh, it's natural that the pictorial collection has a number of items by members of the Allport family. This is the Opossum Mouse, a lithograph done by Mary Morton Allport in the middle 1840s. Another important work is this uh, book by Pigany. Pigany, the son of a convict, was born at Hobart in 1836. And some would say that he is the first and the only Tasmanian-born artist of significance. What 
gives a special interest to the pictorial collection is that it is so strong in works by artists who had been or even were convicts at the time that they were painting. Charles Henry Theodore Costantini was a native of Paris. He was a twice transported convict, once to New South Wales where he'd been sent for life, pardoned, returned to England and no sooner had he got there and he was transported again for stealing a five pound note and arrived in Van Diemen's Land in 1827. William Bulow Gould was a drunkard, so it said, and he turned out hundreds of still lifes, of fruit and flowers. But though he's best known for these, they're not really his best work. Shortly after he arrived, he was at Macquarie Harbour, and he painted this superb book of fishes that doctored a little the surgeon there. Thomas Griffiths Wainwright arrived in Hobart Town in 1837. He'd been sent out for forgery. And because he'd moved on the edges of literary and artistic society in London, he'd taken lessons from Fuseli, the well-known painter of the period, and was after his death written about by Dickens and Bulwer Lytton and others. He's certainly the best known of the convict artists of Tasmania. Thomas Bock arrived in Hobart Town in 1824 and almost at once was given the task of engraving the notes for the new bank of Van Diemen's Land. He also engraved bill heads and did other commercial job printing, illustrations for almanacs and lithographs for the magazines. But he is best known as a portrait painter. We have about a hundred of his works here in this collection, but like many artists of the period, he lived too long and by the late 1840s, he had had to turn to taking daguerreotypes to earn his living. A library of rare books on the Pacific, a museum of distinguished antique furniture, an art gallery of prints, watercolours and oils depicting early colonial life. The Allport is all of these, and as a whole is a priceless record of the heritage of early Australia. <laughs> 